Hey everyone, uh, Rob Ryder, March 6th, March 6th, 2012. <coughs> I believe that's a Tuesday. Yesterday I did any, uh, I did a uh, audio, or excuse me, a video on, uh, called it Indictment Shakedown, using this particular document as the uh, the basis for going through and looking at definitions of the words that are on it, <clears throat> see what we could find that we could use to our advantage, and uh, <clears throat> so that's what that was about. And on there, <clears throat> I said that I would be coming up with my idea of a plea of the crown that uh, they may try to help get this man out of jail. Um, he's already in jail based on this. That this document has no seals from a court. Doesn't have a seal from anybody. And uh, nowhere, not a seal. No. One thing that uh, I didn't notice yesterday, I'm just kind of noticing it today. <sighs> it's got a case number up here, 4.10 or 4 colon 10 CR00240 dash CKJ dash JJM, which is different than this number here. So I don't know what that means exactly. That looks like the case, which we have to go look up the definition of case to see what it is. I'm just kind of noticing this myself, but um, <clears throat> nevertheless, this is the document that put a man in jail, uh, saying that uh, somebody, they never did say who the defendant is, um, may have done something. And... Uh, As you notice, the only place it says defendant, they use the all capital letter name. There's two counts, they both do the same thing, right? But I don't see the all capital letter name up here as the defendant. <laughs> Must be a mistake. Anyways, on to what I wrote um, for what it's worth. So, uh, a please to the Crown, and I decided to go with one court of justice, and that's based on. Uh, in the Michigan Constitution, the, ju the judicial power, first of all, notice, everything in here is in lower case. There, there's not uppercase anything. The judicial power of the state is vested exclusively in one court of justice, which shall divide it into one Supreme Court, one Court of Appeals, one Trial Court of General Jurisdiction, known as a Circuit Court, <coughs> one Probate, Courts of Limited Jurisdiction, and as the legislature may establish by two-thirds members elected to and serving in each house. So that's why I call it that. I'm, I'm just going to call it what it is, one court of justice. And the plaintiff would be me or you, Robert Allen. <coughs> I'm a son of God. That's called my addition. That, that's important later on. Uh, it's called a chosen action, and uh, I wasn't really sure what that should be, but that seemed to, the, the definition of chosen action seemed to fit best. Uh, I want to terminate the false imprisonment of the first hyphen middle of the defendant, who's the son of God also, that that's his addition. Investigate false imprisonment, misprison, subord, uh, subordination of perjury. And the number is the, the number that was on the case. This number here, CR10 dash da da da. But I'm wondering if this number here needs to be on there also. And so that needs to be investigated further. Um, I'd put them both on, I guess. Uh, I like the word Oyez. Oyez, Oyez, Oyez. Uh, I like the definition that Bouvier's gives for it. <clears throat> so I am Robert Allen, son of God. So this is being written for somebody who's already in jail and you're on the outside trying to get them out. As opposed to you having this case to deal with yourself, not having gone to jail, just been served these papers that say that you've done these things, right? It's an indictment. It could be used for lots of things. This particular one is false presentation of claims to the Internal Revenue Service. <clears throat> Basically, they're trying to get you for perjury. Um, but back to the <coughs> back to the words. <laughs> so I'm writing this as me trying to get somebody else out who's already in jail. Uh, so I am Robert Allen, son of God. Here's one of his people. 
the name Robert Allen is my gift from the Creator, and you will address me by no other. I claim superior rights, title, and interest to my earthen vessel, landed estate named Robert Allen Rutluski, my all caps, and its real property and interest. <clears throat> I avoid any deed that I was grantor of as an infant, by which some stranger claims to have an interest in my land or estates. I am no man's bond servant. I am the sovereign power, Lord Paramount of my nation state. You are the subordinate, and the Father is our witness. Now, the reason I say that is these folks have taken an oath. Right? They, they've taken an oath to be a servant. Uh, the judges at a certain level have taken, uh, have been given a uh, uh, copy hold a state of inheritance. <clears throat> and I believe the elected officials get what's called a copy hold a state of years. And, and they actually make up the living in the county uh, as far as being under the laws of England or, or common law. But they've made us a bond servant by this agreement that we got into as a uh, an infant, and uh, as long as the uh, agreement exists, there's it runs with the land, and basically it gives them legal title over your land and estate with a simple mortgage. Once a mortgage paid is paid, it's yours. Um, so, you know, more on that later. That that has to do with trying to get out of the system completely. Right now, we're just trying to get our brother out of jail. So I'm not going to go into that right now. Okay, so, uh, but I, still, I'm going to tell them who I am. I want them to know exactly who I am. So any registration of my earthen vessel, land, and estate, its real property and interest, is to be investigated by a sergeant at law, master at the bench, for misprison. I am not across the sea, infant, incompetent, or other malady, I am the proper owner of my lands and estate, and you will acknowledge it so, or be in violation of your oath, vow, or promise. I accept and acknowledge the dominium granted me by the Father over my lands and estates and enjoyment of his creations as a son of God and rightful heir living under his law. I accept the oaths of all officers, bind them to it, and remind them they have a fiduciary duty to me, making you liable for the actions of your subordinates. Your acceptance of a copyhold estate has bound your soul to eternal damnation if you should ever break God's law. And he is now witness to your acts and deeds. The king is never leg legally liable, and any controversy that this king is involved in is due to dereliction of duty of an officer or his subordinate to be investigated by the court of inquiry, the controversy immediately extinguished. I am one of the people. The words the word people occurs in a policy of insurance. The insurer insures against detainments of all kings, princes, and people. He is not by this understood to insure against the promiscuous or lawless rabble which may be guilty of attacking or detaining a ship. That's out of the definition of people in Bouvier's. Go read it sometime. I'm going to go with the first part. Call myself a people and invoke the insurance policy. <clears throat> I appear on behalf of one of the people, and this is the defendant now, not you, and he's also a son of God. This plea of the crown is to be immediately acted on and investigation and acted on and this pleas of the crown is to be immediately acted on and I guess I need to and investigation commenced. Uh, the defendant first and middle, is to be released from his and false imprisonment. And then the definition of false imprisonment. So I'm going to define what these are. If they don't rebut it, then that is the definition. So false imprisonment is an intentional de intentional detention of the person of another, not authorized by law, is false imprisonment. It is any illegal imprisonment without any process whatever or under color of process, wholly illegal, without regard to the question whether any crime has been committed or a debt due. And because this is a tort, I didn't realize this before, I, I'm just looking, I, I, torts have to do with uh, equity. I do believe that's what a tort is, but uh, equity follows the law. First, you have to, first, if it's lawful, you can have equity. So, if you don't argue with what they're saying about the law, then they're saying you already agreed with the law that's already been established. They've said you made a violation. You, you've not come and said, where's your evidence? 
Uh, so the remedy is in order to be restored to liberty by writ of habeas corpus and to recover damages for the injury by action of trespass uh, via armis to punish the wrongdoer to the public. By the false imprisonment of an individual, the offender may be indicted. That's the definition of false imprisonment on Bouvier, so it's good enough for me. I'm going to put it in there and define it for him. But numerous acts of misprison, such as concealment, deceit, subordination, uh, perjury, treason, uh, uh, by numerous acts of misprison, such as concealment, deceit, subordination, of perjury, treason, a son of God is held against his will. Only one point of law need to be contested to overturn this special proceeding. I will give you several. The plaintiff has not appeared in proper person and delivered his affidavit under penalty of perjury to substantiate his claim, nor provided the depositions of his two witnesses. I demand their testimony be immediately enrolled on the record. If said affidavit and deposition do not exist, then this case is not in due form of law, and the defendant is held under false imprisonment and to be immediately released, returned to his loved ones with dignity and made whole. The civil case does not appear to have an original writ under the great seal sued out of the court of chancery, and therefore cannot have a value of more than 40 shillings. As all civil matters are under concurrent jurisdiction with the king's bench, one supreme court, and therefore cognizable in common law, in common law, if the value of the charge is over $20, the right to a jury is preserved. As there was no common law jury of 24 peers, this case could not have had a value exceeding $20. Yet a man was in prison. This can only be from concealment. Concealment's misprison. This indictment alleges a violation, uh, an act done unlawfully and with force. I demand the evidence and testimony of the trespass to be enrolled onto the record and the value claim exposed. A lawful indictment requires a defendant's name and addition and it does not list uh, first middle of the defendant, son of God, as a defendant. Yet it is he who is being held under false imprisonment. This is an admission and unlawful. And where this thing about uh, violation came from was uh, you know, we're just going to use their words right there. It says violation. It's on their document. Well, they're, they're saying you've done an act done unlawfully and with force. <clears throat> this indictment alleges perjury by presentation of false claims. So in some offenses, as in perjury, the day must be precisely stated. Yet the indictment uses disjunctive allegation, an attempt to claim in a civil lawsuit that one thing or another occurred, and in criminal charges that the accused committed one crime or another. Such complaints are disallowed because the defendant is entitled to know what he, she, is must defend, as witness in counts one and two, by the use of on or about. We'll go down here and look. So when you go down here and look, this is supposed to be a lawful indictment, and a lawful indictment it is <laughs> precisely when perjury they must say what day the perjury happened. It doesn't say on here what day the perjury happened. Therefore, by definition, it's not a lawful indictment. Uh, so, I believe this to be subordination of perjury. And in that definition, and if any person or person shall knowingly or willingly procure any such perjury to be committed, every person so offending shall be deemed guilty of subordination of perjury, and shall on conviction thereof be punished by fine not exceeding $2,000, and by imprisonment and confinement to hard, barred labor. i got to go see. That's cut and pasted out of the Bouviers I had, and I don't know if it's hard or barred. Is there a such thing as barred labor? <clears throat> not to exceed five years according to the aggravation of the offense. I demand it to be investigated. So again, I, I'm saying I believe and I demand investigation. I don't know. I want it investigated. They're the experts. Go investigate the law. This indictment claims the grand jury charges is not charge practice, the opinion expressed by the court to a jury of the law arising out of the case before them, as there is no opinion on the record from the court. The grand jury charges appears to fall under contracts, charge for contracts, an obligation entered into by the owner of an estate, which makes the estate responsible for its performance. 
an obligation binding upon him who enters into it, which may be removed or taken away by a discharge. So, an obligation entered into by the owner of an estate. Well, they're saying you're the owner of an estate and you're responsible for a charge. And they're going to try to get you to seal a document as the owner on the bonds. This particular kind of commission, which once undertaken, undertakes to perform for another, is keeping the custody of his goods. is called a charge. Well, it's also called deposit. And they've deposited our... Uh, um, assets and by definition when you deposit like a title deed or whatever you deposit you give the person you deposited it with the depositary into the depository a equitable mortgage over the property and therefore legal title well they have that until you want to undeposit the property and there's supposed to be a set of instructions to do that. Either they've lent you some money and it's on deposit now until you pay back the money, less than $20, or you would have had a jury, or simply because you agreed to have something deposited is enough, or a judicial mortgage, they just go ahead and do it, and they do it by action of law without any consent of the parties because the, the, the property is contested by two different people. We're going to say we have the superior claim and make them rebut it. What allegation did First and Middle enter into prior to the commencement of this indictment? What commission was undertaken for the keeping and custody of his goods? This is concealment, misprison, and only entered into under threat, coercion, and deceit. I shouldn't say duress, I guess, right? That's really the right word. That's what I wanted to put there, duress, D-U-R-E, duress. <laughs> All right, so for this charge for contracts to, to, to go forward, you should have already been on the paperwork saying that you owed this money, and they would have brought it to court. What they're trying to do is get you to acknowledge a statute merchant in a court of equity that's running in the background behind the curtain of the civil court that you're in. But because you're in a civil court, a man cannot get remedy in a civil court, so says Coke. You have to go to common law, and to go to common law, you use a plea of the crown, because a plea of the crown is a complaint used for all criminal and mortal matters. Mortal is man. And it goes to one place, to the king's bench. Well, I'm going to call it one's uh, whatever the thing was. Um, what is the name of the thing? One Court of Justice. There we go. There was where I was. Okay. All right, so there's the charges. So anyways, you know, the, where, where was the agreement prior to the indictment? That's what I want to know that bound the brother to a charge. I don't think it existed. This indictment claims to be a true bill. Definition true bill. Practice. These words are endorsed on a bill of indictment. When a grand jury, after having heard a witness for the government, are of the opinion that there is sufficient cause to put the defendant on his trial. Formerly, the endorsement was bill of error when the legal proceedings were in Latin. It is still the practice to write on the back of the bill, ignoramus, when the jury do not find it to be a true bill. Okay, well, first of all, the words, so we're talking about a true bill, the words are endorsed. Endorsed is on the back of a document. That's the definition of endorsed. And by God, there it is, true bill. It's endorsed on this document. This must be the back. What's on the other side of the paper? I don't think you've got a complete record. And also, it needs to be uh, signed off by the uh, jury foreman. This says presiding juror. I don't think they're the same. Why would they have two different words if it was the same thing? If it doesn't say jury foreman, I'm going to ask that question. But I wonder what's under the redacted part. Could this actually now say ignoramus? I don't know. That's why we're asking these questions. My record doesn't 
the record these folks got does not match the original record, that in itself makes it unlawful. <clears throat> these words are endorsed is to write them on the back of the bill. By omission, the front of the bill has not been made part of this record. I demand it to be enrolled onto the record. Omission is misprison. Further, this court stamped copy of the record of this true bill has the determination of it uh, of if this is an actual true bill or a black oh, gee, what the hell is I writing? Further, this court stamped copy of the record of the true bill has the determination of if this is an actual true bill or a black or not blackened out. This alters the instrument of record from each other and violates due form of law. Basically what I just said. I might rewrite that better, but I'm going to leave it for now. You can change it. I believe this special proceeding against the defendant property, which is his all capital letter name, because they're charging his landed estate. Right? When you go and look at this, this is who they're actually after. Michael Thomas McQuillan. Well, to me, that's the name of my Ponderosa. If I'm Michael Thomas, it's my property, and if you're going to bring a claim, you better take an oath. Uh, has created a judicial mortgage by operation of law without any prior agreement by the active, by an active misprison, and demand a return to the defendant all of his property, rights, title, and interest. This indictment alleges the defendant is in violation of ecclesiastic law, Title 18, United States Code 287. It's an ecclesiastic corporation. This indictment claims defendant all caps is a resident of the district a minister of ecclesiastic pagan religion that's what resident is now I don't know if that's what they're claiming but I'm gonna put them down if they don't rebut them then that's what it was and again I didn't need to point all these out I'm doing it to make a point that there's numerous things that people are charged for that if they just were to uh, um, take their rebuttal or their answer to the correct court which is the court of record which is the king's bench on a plea of the crown since they made it available to you maybe things would be different so ecclesiastic authorities uh, Mr. F First and Middle is a son of God conscious of his trinity not a member of your rel religious society and your statute laws are not binding upon him any attempt by your court officers priests clerics officials or their subordinates to bind him to your laws marks you as a heretic and I demand the vicar general investigate your heresy and prosecute your sin I'm gonna leave it up to him I'm gonna say I'm not part of your society I have free will and I'm not in your religious society and if you're writing statutes and you go out in the summertime to Bohemian Grove to go pray in an owl well you have nothing to do with me and neither do your statutes Finally, the Creator left ten laws for men and put them in stone. Any other laws written by men for men are inferior law, binding only on those that freely consent. It appears many of his laws have been broken during the course of these proceedings. Copy holders of estates of inheritance and years, your conscience is now called before the Creator to stand as judge of your deeds. Those of privilege within your walls have broken his laws, and you have sworn to destroy the lawbreaker and to consume their nations, looking neither to the left or the right, and no respect to persons. The defendant is my brother, a fellow son of God. We are men of peace, and rightful heirs of the kingdom of heaven, and witnesses before the Creator to your deeds. That's what I'd send him. I don't know if there's enough room here yet to put a uh, certificate of acknowledgement, but you should put, uh, this is where you put your certificate of acknowledgement, because you're doing this as your free will act indeed. Don't get hung up what the paper says. Um, right? They're all your words. You were not under any threat, coercion, or duress to write this. So it is your free will act indeed, and it's an acknowledgement. And now you're going to tell them that you've written this your free will act indeed and get a certificate of acknowledgement from a notary who's acknowledging that you told her you did it of your free will act indeed. And when she puts her seal on it, 
um, you're going to take that and get a certificate of authority for that notary that basically says that on that day she was able to do what she did, he or she, and in Michigan they come from the county clerk for the county that the notary has her commission in and it comes under the seal of the court of record. You will staple that to this document, make everything one document. It must be stapled together. That makes it due form of law, full faith and credit of the Constitution. Now, one thing I did forget here is you got to have your um, what you're going to do to get to finish this up. So, um, this my. This is my solemn asservation with the Father as our WIT witness. That would go there, maybe. Yeah, that's going to be more than one page. And then uh, put a line, seal. A man's seal is whatever he says it is, and in common law, all documents must be sealed. They don't need to be signed. It must be sealed. So when you put seal behind your name, you've just said that that's your seal. So I would just put my signature, as I always have on here, I'm just going to tell them it's my seal. There's one seal from me. Certificate of Acknowledgement is another seal from the notary. Certificate of Authority is another seal from... Uh, the court of competent jurisdiction over the notary. That makes three seals on a common law document. That makes it a common law deed. They have agreed by putting the seal of the court on here that everything on here is lawful. Then I would take this and enter it into their court case. Now you're going to keep the original. You always keep this original because it's your deed. And if you want to give somebody a copy, in my opinion, you just need to burn a copy on a computer uh, or on a copy machine and put on it, consider original, and seal it with your name. Robert Allen Rutluski, parenthesis seal. Consider original. Who's going to argue? You have the original, so you're telling them that it is. They better believe you. So... Okay, well, that's what I have for this. I don't know if it would be of any help to anybody. You could use this for a lot of different things because they all start with a piece of shit paper like this that has no fucking value whatsoever. Not a seal. Charging you with a violation, which is something done with force. Charging you with perjury. There's no defendant down here. The only defendant is the all capital letter name. That isn't listed up here. It's got the file date here. Well, by definition, that's endorsed on the document, which means this is the back. So you think about it. You take your paperwork in, they put a seal on it, and it's on the side of the writing. Well, no wonder they don't see your paper. They're looking at the other side. It, you put the file seal on the back. Tell him to put the frickin' seal on the other piece, the side of the paper. Then see if he doesn't see it. And, you know, no seals down here. There's nothing. It's a presiding juror. It doesn't say it's the jury foreman. Lawfully it's supposed to. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that, post this, and I hope you guys find it of use. Take care.